Hey, all my Gemini friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with your May 2024 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I talk about Gemini, I'm talking about Gemini rising. This is also applicable to Gemini moon, Gemini sun. And if you have three or more personal planets, it's known as a stellium in Gemini. This a video is applicable to you as well. It's also the based on the Pacific time zone. So please adjust for your location. Let's jump right in because the month starts with um, Pluto is about to go retrograde. It will go retrograde. It's been in its shadow stage, which is where the planet slows down uh, before it appears to go backwards in the sky. And uh, Pluto is going to move um, retrograde until October 11th, and it will revisit its last degrees or the last degrees of Capricorn in October, September and October. So this is very powerful. In addition to the retrograde starting, because Capricorn ru rules our history, it rules um, government, it rules authority, it rules a sense of public status, uh, structures, uh, things that people see and um, abide by in many ways, kind of the rules and the regulations. And so as Pluto moves uh, backward through Aquarius and into the late degrees of of Capricorn, it will make a sextile or continues, I should say, to make a sextile to Neptune. This is going to go on. The sextile between Neptune and uh, Pluto will go on for like the next decade. Literally, it's a very, very long transit. Uh, as the planets move, they stay in this harmonious aspect. And in 2025, we'll see Neptune move into Aries. And I bl I'm bringing this up now because I think this is very much transform transforming us all into spiritual warriors, for lack of a better term, spiritual um, lighthouses, spiritual knights of the round table, being aware of the higher vibrations of what Pluto has to offer as it transits Aquarius and it's deconstructing the old historic Capricorn structures. And we're looking at this from a way of connecting with the divine laws of the universe. And I, so this is very powerful. And as Pluto stations at the second degree, it will go retrograde tomorrow the 2nd of uh, May, we see Mars move into its lordship in Aries. And this is important because Mars and Pluto both co-rule Scorpio. So they are by nature complementary. This can feel very destructive initially, but we see this very, um, the sextile is, is a favorable aspect. It's, it's working for the higher vibration. So here we see that Mars and Neptune have been having a conversation. Uh, they're summiting here up in your uh, 11th. This would be Pisces is your 10th house. Aries is your 11th house. Taurus is your 12th house. So they've been summiting here about how we want to expand our networks, what we want in the way of our hopes and our dreams, which is your 11th house. I'm going to click off of Pluto right now because we see there's quite a bit of activity in your 11th and 12th house. We have Chiron has been transiting your 11th house, really transforming any wounds that you have into gifts, bringing in illumination as you find yourself connecting with others, joining groups that are aligned to how you think that support your individual wants and desires. We also see your ruling planet, Mercury is now moving forward. It went retrograde last month and met up with the North Node, having many conversations about what do I want for myself and how do I want to move my story forward? And in April, we saw that um, Mars was in Pisces and Venus was in Aries. And so the conversations going on were a bit, uh, could be considered a bit challenged uh, by by old fashioned ways. But here, I think that Mars was having that spiritual warrior conversation and Venus was talking about her independence. And now as they're in their rulerships, 
this is very powerful for moving your story forward. We're also still feeling the conjunction between uh, Uranus and Jupiter here in your 12th house, giving you an opportunity to really uh, revolutionize your work dynamic, how you make money, how you, what your belief system is, your philosophies, very much you could uh, potentially have uh, culminated or graduated from some sort of university. Uh, you could also just have had an epiphany of deciding that you weren't going to hold yourself small anymore. The challenge of the 12th house is it is known as the house of, of troubles or the house of self undoing. And it's also the house of the subconscious where we operate in a way that we're not aware of. And here, Taurus represents your family history and how that family history nurtured your ability to use your skills, to trust your voice, to make your own money. And while Venus and Mars were in the previous signs, Venus in Aries, Mars in Pisces, these conversations were taking place so that when they became in their rulership, action could start to happen. And that's what I think is going on here. So here in your 11th house is an opportunity to start to take action, to start to connect with the, the people, or even potentially reconcile situations in your own mind with your siblings, how you think. The 11th house also represents um, stepchildren, adopted children, foster children. If you're in, in that phase of life and that is applicable to you, you could be working out some things and clearing those things up. Uh, we see Chiron here is moving forward and, and Mercury has gone over these points and been reviewing wounds and what I want for myself. And now it's about taking brave action. So let's um, jump to the third, because there we're going to see Neptune at the anoretic degree. And I think this is really powerful because we're going to spend about the next 10 plus years with uh, Neptune and Pluto in a sextile, a favorable aspect. But at the same time, this, this is the planet of death and rebirth, and this is the planet of self undoing and, or of hidden troubles, hidden enemies. So I think that this is, could potentially be a time where we ourselves could feel a, a push pull between two parts of ourselves. One that is aware of the divine laws of the universe, and it's time to implement those laws and to stand on them. And then still trying to walk through the human structure and the deeper that Pluto gets into a query the more we'll see the human structure and how we run our everyday lives. You know, we could see ourselves start colonizing Mars in the, you know, the next few decades as humanity stretches out into space. And this will naturally change how we view ourselves on a universal level. So this dynamic here is going to continue in play. And with Aquarius being your um, ninth house of beliefs and Pisces being your 10th house of, of public status, I think your transformation will be very visible to those around you. So you're going to start feeling this happening, especially now that Pluto is going into its last retrograde in Capricorn before it settles into Aquarius. And Capricorn is naturally your um, eighth house of transformation. So let's go now to the new moon on the seventh. And this new moon is going to happen at 8.21 PM. Oops. How did I do that? 8.21 PM Pacific time. Now, when we see this new moon, we see this again in your 12th house. So this is a really an opportunity to plant the seeds that's at the Virgonian degree, which for me is coming back to ringing back to Mercury, right? And so this is planting the seeds for a new sense of yourself and your voice. And while they're not in an aspect, we can see that Chiron and Mercury are in a conjunction exact. So this is your ruling planet. Chiron rules 
the the wound that can transform into a gift, but that gift is extracted through time, through wisdom, through a sense of diligence. It's a very Saturnian energy. So here there could be a lot of thoughts about, you know, potentially how to make that transformation how to to start to extract the wisdom from the wound and here in this new moon you're planting in the seeds of faith in the house of the unseen and the invisible in many ways as a gemini you're very you know cerebral because of the mercurial rule but here you're you're put you're planting your seeds in the faith of a new beginning for your heart to lead your head to sort of think of your heart as the brain of your physical existence and the 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 actual mind mercurial information facilitates the heart so i think this is really powerful we see here that pluto retrograde is making a trine aspect to jupiter jupiter is at the very you know the last few degrees before it's going to move into your first house of self and that's going to be a very powerful year for you and at the same time i have to uh, you know continue to kind of harp on this this aspect here between neptune and pluto because this is going to be sitting in the background it's going to be sitting sort of if we think about it naturally your 11th house is Aries and this transit is happening in Aquarius, which naturally rules the 11th house. And we see that um, Neptune is moving into Aries, which is, and this is going to be in 2025, but at this anoretic degree, we are mastering this energy of transformation of kind of sitting in the dark. Pluto rules, you know, the, the anus, it rules places in the dark. It rules most, when we think of sex, we don't think of people having sex during the day, we think of it at night. So there's this, this sort of transformation of the Gemini cerebral part of your mind, starting to connect to trust what you could potentially think is imagination or even fantasy as you start to muse in a more expansive way in a way that supports your belief system transforming from looking for information outside of yourself and now transforming that information coming from inside of yourself. That's what I think is going on. That's where we're planting the seeds here to really, uh, to release the shackles, to find that your service is an understanding of your history and maybe even an understanding more of how the human naturally, in, in many ways, the human's fears, you know, they serve a bigger purpose, but they also, um, they are part of the human experience. And when we understand that we can surrender sometimes to the moment rather than trying to squelch the fear, stop the fear, plug the hole, you know, we can start to look, where does that wisdom, what, where is it? What does it offer us? Okay. On the 13th, let's go to the 13th. I'm going to put this back to 12 PM. We're going to see, you know, there's so much activity throughout the whole month. And this has been going on since April. So your 11th and 12th houses have been lit up and your 10th house as well. Um, but this, this is a very strong, concentrated energy. It also speaks to um, how you engage people, um, support from others, the groups that you engage in. This would be uh, something to, to look at. So here we are seeing that Venus is now starting her approach to Uranus and the Uranus and the sun are in an exact conjunction and Jupiter is at the Gemini degree. While this is still kind of a, a, a wide orb, I believe because of the strong influence of the conjunction between Uranus and Jupiter, that we're going to feel this. And there could very well be lightning strikes for you. You could think to yourself, oh my gosh, I finally got it. The, you could put the puzzle piece together. That's the way I want to put it. And this could also support you finding a way to supplement your income, um, bring in more resources, expand 
your sense of feeling secure in the material world. But a lot of it is going to get to be as you trust the unseen. If we think about Uranus and that it rules science and space, while we can see space with our eyes, we don't really know what is out there when we go there. So there is a sense of faith attached to this energy as well. When we think of the idea of scientific experiments, we're having faith that we're going to discover something that's going to be helpful to humanity. So this is about really individualizing yourself and under understanding that the subconscious mind doesn't have to be understood. <laughs> that's the way I want to put it. And it's more about shifting your focus into where you want to move forward. And that would be where we see Mars's influence moving forward towards this uh, North Node. This is going to be a really strong ravenous energy. It could indicate a little bit of um, annoyance, maybe potentially with those that are... Um, within your group, within your network, but at the same time, it gives you an opportunity to exercise the energies over here, really planting those, the seeds that you planted in the new moon will start to, you know, take, take root, but we've got to give it time and nurture the energy. That would be your mind nurturing the energy. Um, we are going to see on the 15th, I'm going to move actually to the 17th, but on the 15th, we're going to see uh, Mercury move into Taurus. And on the 17th, we see this energy is getting stronger and stronger. Venus and Uranus are here literally almost exactly conjunct. We see the sun and Jupiter conjunct. And I really think that this is an opportunity for there to be an enlightenment to there to be some sort of, again, an awareness at a deeper level than you have experienced before. And now a bravery about, you know, this could be where you open an Etsy account, or maybe you decide to start some sort of network or, or internet platform. And maybe you're just talking about your own ideas and your own thing. It doesn't really matter the subject or, or the endeavor as much as it, it trusting your heart and trusting your talents and your skills and having joy about it brings the expansion. And this would really very very much indicate a use of technology or something that's going to support your future and potentially could even break ancestral soul dynamics that you bring in lifetime after lifetime that have been challenging for you. And now you've learned to transform them. The closer Mars gets to the North node, the more this is going to become a ravenous energy for, you know, being uh, brave and independent about where you want to go and how you don't want to be tethered to somebody else's idea of happiness. That's the way I want to put it. We will see on, let's go to the 20th. The sun will enter Gemini. And then we're going to start to see a whole, this as we move into June, and later into um, uh, and, and later in in May and into June, we're going to see a whole cluster of planets coming into your first house. So all the prep work you do now, emotionally, mentally, kind of putting in sort of a maybe even a bit of discipline in your spiritual practices, being aware of how you're speaking to yourself. If you're saying "I will," then you're putting your intention into the future. When you say I am, you're putting it into the present. So having this awareness can really take advantage of the last bits of this Taurus energy because by the 25th, we'll have both Venus and uh, Jupiter joining your first house. So you can really kind of grab onto that. I want to offer it this way, Gemini, because you may not know the detail of what, you know, there just may be a nagging something hitting you in this 12th house, something that happens, you know, that you've been inadvertently stubborn about believing I'm not good enough. There's not enough of me. I'm too old, blah, blah, blah. This offers you an epiphany to shift that and to shift that into a tool that supports you and expands you. So I think that's really, really powerful. Let's go to the 23rd, where we will experience a full moon in Sagittarius. And that is going to take place at 6.53 a.m. And here we see the sun is at two degrees of Gemini. The moon is at two degrees of um, Sagittarius. And this 
is very nice because we see Gemini is the first house here. So this is the first time we're getting to see the chart as it sits for you. And I think this is really a, a great opportunity because here we have an illumination and that illumination is conjunct Venus and Jupiter at the anoretic degree of Taurus. That's a mastering degree. It's at the 29 reduces down to an 11. The 11 is um, the master number of thought. And we see your ruling planet is at 11 degrees in the 12th house. This is the mastering of thought is never wrestling your negativity to the ground. It's really much more about realizing that that's a natural flow of the brain and how the brain has been, you know, nurtured through a lifetime. And as you give life to that, then you just, it's a surrender. It's, it's like, it's, it's a, a detachment in many ways. And it's really powerful because we also see, I'm just going to hit Venus real quick we see a sextile to Neptune at 29 degrees. So we're extracting the spiritual dynamics and the spiritual wisdom of the ebb and the flow of the challenge and the reward of the up and the down that is the universe. We also see that the sun is making a fabulous trine to Pluto. Pluto here at two degrees, zero minutes, a pure energy of, of Venus and self-worth, which would be reflected over here in your 12th house of Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus is at this 29th degree. So here I'm really shifting the way I'm thinking. And this is again, an awareness. It's not really a movement from one place to another, as much as it's standing still and then just moving my head from left to right kind of for lack of a better metaphor. So this is a really powerful, powerful um, at full moon. In my particular opinion, we also see that moon is making a trine to Neptune and a favorable dynamic, the sextile to Pluto exact. This to me is again, where we're starting to really connect the spiritual dots, the divine laws of the universe, the soul that dominates the, over the, ex, the experience and the, the finiteness of the human dynamic. And through the finiteness of the human dynamic, the soul expands bigger and bigger and bigger. We could see that there's this little bit of a potential for a bit of annoyance and anger coming from your 11th house. So if you have stepchildren or foster children or adopted children, or you have, because the 17th degree is a Leo degree, and that also represents the child, um, I guess you might be illuminated a little bit about that, or you may even see your child, a talent of your child's that, that you hadn't seen before, and, and you might be compelled or inspired to take action in that way. I don't know why I'm putting that out there. All right, let's get to the 23rd when Venus will enter Gemini. Oh, we're here already. Let me go to the 25th. I'm sorry. This is where Jupiter will enter Gemini. Let me go back to 12 p.m. And now we see that, okay, hasn't quite happened yet, but on this day later in the day, Let's just go to the 26th to make it easier. Jupiter, Venus, and the sun are all in your first house. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Now, Jupiter's not, uh, uh, Jupiter's in detriment in Gemini. Um, and yet at the same time, you know, I think that these planets are evolving. And while Jupiter is extremely expansive in this particular place, I believe that Jupiter wants to expand Gemini's sense of self. And as they find a cooperative, meaning the idea of Gemini being ruled by Mercury, Mercury takes short bits of information and passes them around. And then Jupiter, you know, looks at philosophies and ideologies. We're going to marry those two things together because when we get into June in your birthday month, we're already there. Um, we're going to see Mercury move into Gemini as well. So we're going to see a conjunction between Jupiter and Mercury, between Venus and um, Venus has already moved past, but here we're seeing this is an expansion of my wealth, of my money potentials as I assert myself. Venus rules money and Jupiter rules wealth. So this is really fun. Um, and let's just go to the last day of the month, which is the 31st. 
and we see that Ven um, Mercury and Uranus are in a conjunction. They've been in a conjunction for a few days. This is really an inch. It feels like lightning strikes. It feels to me like I have these epiphanies that kind of take me and propel me into the future. Like, oh my gosh, I know I don't want to experience that again, but now I know as a result of experiencing something, Taurus in history, naturally your 12th house, and now I can move past it. And we see that the sun and Venus are conjunct on this day. And this kind of feels warm and fuzzy. It feels like a, a day that I feel rather positive. There's not one red line in this. We've got a little half square here to the North node. Um, but overall, the month ends really nicely. And again, I want to really emphasize to you, Gemini, that you have this opportunity through your um, uh, ninth house of Aquarius and your 10th house of Pisces. Uh, we see this continued sextile that will then take you into your 11th house. So over the next few years, you have an opportunity to really uh, capitalize and transform to live your hopes and your dreams. And part of it is kind of allowing yourself, you know, if we think about Gemini, the dispenser of information, then in many ways, as the journalist, you are, you are feeding your audience and may inadvertently focus on the audience. So the focus of self that's coming up in the month of June and what's so important as you have looked and felt and transformed your 12th house unconscious energies and you've looked at the networks and where you want to go in your hopes and your dreams that you can move your story forward more efficiently and more aligned to your deeper truth as we move deeper and deeper into this decade coming up between 19 I'm sorry 2024 and 2034 Sorry, I'm mid-century modern. I forgot I'm not in the 20th century. All right, Gemini, thank you so much for listening to me. I hope you like this. Please share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. The little thumbs up would be cool too. And I hope you'll be back in the month of June uh, to check out my video then. So have a lovely, lovely uh, May. And if you're an early born uh, Gemini, happy birthday. I'll see you soon.